today at the First Baptist Church of Hingham. Welcome you on behalf of Pastor Gary, who was on his staycation. Um, and before we start our first praise and worship song, I want to thank all of the musicians, all of our praise team for being here with us today, and let you know that our call to worship comes from Psalm 95, verses 1 to 3. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, the great King above all gods. Come, let us worship the Lord together. Those who've had injuries, 
those who are in transitions, whether it's jobs or traveling. We pray your blessings upon people who are not doing so well physically, going through physical changes. We lift up everyone, Lord. We lift up our family members. We ask you to be with them. We ask you to strengthen each one, Lord, in our church family. Bless Pastor Gary and Deb as they are during this a staycation at home. We ask you to bless them. And be with each of our needs, Lord. You know what we're all going through. You lift them up. You hear our prayers, Lord. We pray that you would bless each one watching, each member of our family. In Christ Jesus' name. And let's all sing together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we get ready for the solo. Hallelujah.
want to talk today about forgiveness. Why is forgiveness important? It's important because it is the essence of God's nature. It is the essence of God's character. And I felt that the Lord wanted me to share some thoughts with you today concerning forgiveness. There's power in forgiveness. The title of this message is The Power of Forgiveness. That source of power comes directly from Almighty God. He is the creator of heaven and earth. And he gives us the ability to forgive because he demonstrated forgiveness from the cross. Now I'm going to break this message down in three parts. There are three aspects of forgiveness. The first is forgiveness is a command. It's a command from God with a consequence. We don't have a choice. We are to supposed to forgive. And if we don't, there's a consequence to that disobedience. We won't get forgiven. The second aspect is that forgiveness is not valid unless it's done from our heart. We have to forgive from our heart. And the third aspect is that forgiveness is something that we have to demonstrate on an ongoing basis. It's not something that we just do a couple of times and then we forget about it. We have to always forgive. There are always going to be times when we're called upon to forgive one another. Amen. Nelson Mandela once said that as I walked out of the door toward the gate that would lead to my freedom, <clears throat> I knew that if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison. C.S. Lewis said that to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. And Martin Luther King once wrote that forgiveness is not an occasional act, but it's a constant attitude. We have to always continually forgive one another. So first of all, what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is a process of letting go, <coughs> excuse me, Letting go of the need to seek revenge or to pay back somebody. It is ceasing to hold on to the resentment that you once had. Regardless of what they did, we let it go. We exhibit forgiveness when we pardon one another. When we pardon our enemies and no longer want harm to that person. It's in setting the person free. It's dismissing the debt. It's not holding on to what they owe us anymore. True forgiveness is not forgetting that people hurt you, but true forgiveness is a healthy act of the will, making a conscious decision to forgive and let that person off, dismissing the debt, setting that person free. It's a conscious, deliberate decision to release your feelings of resentment and bitterness and vengeance toward a person who has harmed you, regardless of whether they deserve it or not. St. Francis of Assisi once wrote, it is a pardoning that we are pardoned. Bishop Desmond Tutu once wrote, because forgiveness is like this. A room can be dark because you have closed the windows, you've closed the curtains. But the sun is shining outside, and the air is fresh outside. In order to get that fresh air, you have to get up and open the window and draw the curtains apart. Mahatma Gandhi once said that the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attitude, is the attribute of the strong. And Nelson Mandela also once said that resentment if you hold on to resentment, it's like drinking poison, and you hope that it kills your enemies. Hating someone makes them become important, but forgiving them makes them obsolete. Don't hold on to a grudge, because it doesn't make you strong. It makes you become more and more bitter. Forgiving doesn't make you weak, but forgiving 
giving actually sets you free. So I want to talk about the first aspect of forgiveness. It's a command. We have been commanded by Jesus to forgive because God forgave us when his son Jesus died on the cross. Ephesians, the fourth chapter says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, growling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God forgave you. And Mark 11 says, and whenever you stand praying, forgive, and if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father, who is also in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. You see, we're commanded to forgive because there's power. We don't have the power, God has the power. And the most powerful prayer recorded, I believe, in the New Testament is Luke 23, verse, two, verse 34. As he hung on the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's one of the most powerful prayers ever. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was crucified for something he didn't even do. He was innocent, but he was still crucified. Colossians, the third chapter says, bury with one another and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must forgive. And Jesus said, if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. Amen? There are two trajectories. The first is vertical. God forgives us. From heaven to earth, He forgives us. But then the second is horizontal. We must forgive one another. And the two trajectories are connected. If we don't forgive others, we're not going to be forgiven. And when we mess up, we're, we're truly sorry, we can go to the Father, we can go to God and ask for forgiveness. Because 1 John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When God gave His Son, it was a pure love on His part. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my life, my soul, my all. The power of forgiveness is in God. His power is greater than our resentment toward one another. His power is greater than our bitterness or our hatred. And we should all try to memorize Romans 5.5. 5. It is a powerful verse. For God poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. That's how we get the power to forgive. Romans 5.5. 5. For God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. So that's the first aspect. It's a command. The second aspect of it is that it has to be done from the heart. There was the parable that Jesus told in Matthew, the 18th chapter, about the unmerciful servant. And he said to that unmerciful servant, after he had been forgiven, he wouldn't forgive someone else. And so the king was told about it, and he put that unmerciful servant in jail. And then Jesus goes on to say, this is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. It has to be done from the heart. If you say the words, but you don't mean it, it doesn't mean a thing. It's no good. And one of the enemies of forgiveness, you know, is pride. Sometimes we want to hold on to our suffering because we can get some attention out of it. God doesn't want us to do that. Let it go. It has to be done from the heart. If we harbor bitterness in our hearts, then it damages our heart. It destroys us. And then God, of course, will not forgive us. 
Holding on to resentment doesn't make us strong. It destroys. The devil is always trying to get us to focus on the pain, on the hurt, on the suffering. But the power of forgiveness is that when we experience God's forgiveness and remember what he did for us and we forgive others, then he bestows upon us healing, peace, cleansing. It's the power of his spirit. Praise God. Now I want to share a story of someone who had to forgive from her heart. And that was Corrie ten Boom. She was Dutch. And during World War II, she hid Jewish people in their house, she and her family. But they were discovered by the Nazis and they were all arrested and put in concentration camps. Later, Corey was free, but during the prison time, her sister Betsy died, her father died, and there was so much devastation. At any rate, she goes and speaks to a, a church group in Germany after the war. And she finishes. She says there's a man that comes up later, and she recognized him as one of the prison guards who had tortured her and her family. And he came up to her and said, Frau Ten Boom, I have become a Christian. God has forgiven me. But I want to know, will you forgive me? And this is what she wrote. I'm going to read something from her writings. She said, still stood there with this coldness clutching my heart. But forgiveness is not an emotion. I knew that too. Forgiveness is an act of the will. And the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Help, I prayed silently. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You, Lord, supply the feeling. And so woodenly and mechanically, I thrust my hand into the one stretched out to me. And as I did, an incredible thing happened. The current started in my shoulder raced down my arm, sprang into my joint hands. <clears throat> and then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bringing tears to my eyes. I forgive you, brother, I cried with all my heart. For as long as we grasped each other's hands, the former guard and the former prisoner, I had never known God's love so intently as I did there. That's forgiving from the heart. You know what it's like to forgive in the heart. Amen. And the last aspect of forgiveness is that it's continuous. We're always called upon to forgive on an ongoing basis. And I close with a few examples in the Bible. Joseph had to forgive his brothers. They sold him into slavery. They hated him, but yet he forgave. And he said in Genesis 50, You fought evil against me, but God meant it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, to save lives. God meant it for good, and Joseph forgave him. Moses had to forgive his sister Miriam when she ridiculed him. She turned into a leper. But then Moses cried out to the Lord in Numbers, Oh Lord, please heal her. He forgave her. It is important to forgive. Even Paul, the Apostle Paul, had to forgive. When John Mark deserted them on the first missionary journey, Paul held a grudge against Mark. <coughs> but, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2 Timothy, he calls on Timothy to find Mark and bring him to the jail. He says, find Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. So Paul forgives, Joseph forgives, Moses forgives, and most of all, Jesus forgives. Jesus forgives when he says, Father, forgive them. The focus is God asking him to forgive. I can't do it in my own, but I can ask God to help me do it. 
and he will help you. And as it's ongoing, as you have to forgive one another, remember the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. It is at the cross that we discover the power of forgiveness. God wants us to be forgiving just like he is because that is his essence. That's who he is. And he wants us to emulate him. And as a result of doing that, when we forgive, we get closer and closer and closer and closer to a beautiful relationship with the Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads again. Father, we ask you to be with us and help us in those moments when we struggle with trying to hold on to grudges and bitterness. Help us to forgive one another, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. He is Lord. Amen.